is there a Trey Lance landing spot that makes sense in the Niners schedule? And I think, you know what most people would say? Yeah, week, week one. one. Yeah. I wouldn't be opposed. Can you look at a schedule that way? Uh, That's part of the question here. I've never talked to a head coach about this. I would be fascinated. Brian Flores, for those that knew him, like had they thought all along. Uh, I think in recent memory, if I just think about the rookie quarterbacks, several of them ended up starting just immediately. And I think there are a couple guys that jump out. Jared Goff, remember, was like halfway through the season. He kind of came in. Uh, Jameis, day one. Wentz, day one. Uh, Baker Mayfield. Ba- Baker Herbert week two, but it was kind of by accident. Remember, Baker Mayfield was several games in. I think Tyrod Taylor was on the Browns. Remember, he got hurt at a halftime of like a Thursday night game, and they brought him in. Josh Allen, I think he kind of they took a couple games to get in. Lamar, if I remember correctly on Lamar, he came in midseason. Uh, I do think it matters how you're playing, who your guy is. I think Jimmy's the ultimate wild card. Like, Jimmy could be good. Jimmy could be really shitty. Like, Jimmy just could be bad in Detroit and Philly, right? That's another wild card. Like, what if Jimmy's just not good? Like, if they just go in with the plan, like, listen, we're going to slow play it. We don't want to rush him. And then Jimmy just plays poorly. Because they are a loss away in one of those first two games from the conversation getting very, very loud. Like, what are you guys doing? Yeah, like, No one it, wants to watch Jimmy. It's not It's not just a loss. It's, it's what does he look like? Remember last year? It was pretty clear pretty early against the Cardinals. He didn't look right. Just – Done right there. That's that's all it takes. Win or lose. Miami last year I thought was easy to peg because Fitz clearly you know is not he, long term guy. Long term, yeah. Even like not that Jimmy necessarily is right now, but even Jimmy has you. There are just more ways it could go with him than with Fitzpatrick in terms of trade value. In terms of could he come back another year? Like there's just more options there. Um. They had clearly a bye week seven. And I remember talking about it like several weeks before week seven. That's the spot for Tua. And that's what they did. They brought Tua in after their bye week seven. But the other part of that was they had lost their first two games. They beat Jacksonville. They lose to Seattle. Remember, that conversation started around then. They were one and three. And the other element with Tua was Tua was not physically 100% necessarily, right, when the season started. He was coming off hip surgery. And so it might have been that fully healthy to him. Maybe they would have started him week one if they could have. I don't know. That situation was different. But again, they their expectations were different. Like the fact that they turned into a 10 and 16 was not the way we were looking at them week six when we were talking about what are they going to do with Tua. And they were three and three. Like if the Niners are three and three, you just told me right now the Niners are three and three. Are we talking I about? I, I I don't love Indy though to make your you know first ever NFL start. No, no, I, it's fine. I'm not saying that's where he would start. I'm just saying if the Niners are three and three, then I, think I guess Indy a, would be their sixth game. But I hear what you're saying. Indy, you're just using a record. Yeah, I'm just I, I, saying I, I, yeah, if they're three and three, which is what Miami was, are we talking about the possibility of Trey Lance? I think we are. I think at three and three, we're talking about. Now it's not. It may not be. They got to go to him because maybe they're three and three, and Jimmy's look good, and some other weird stuff has happened. But if you're three and three, then there's a chance we're talking about Trey Lance at that point in time. If you're four and two, probably not. If you're five and one, probably not. If you're two and four, hell yeah. Yeah, I. I it definitely depends on Jimmy. And listen, and depends I, on Trey. I, this year, like. You get a year. You only get four years on his rookie contract. That fifth year, that fifth year option is very, very expensive. So the moment that you pick that up and ever get there, if you haven't extended him yet, like you have four years in the window to play him. So the moment he sits out year one, like the Chiefs did not, the Chiefs paid Mahomes after two seasons on the field. It was his third year, but two seasons on the field. That's where I do think if like they end up paying Josh Allen this season, and I, I always hate doing the conversation. We're already talking about paying the guy. But the most valuable part about having the rookie quarterback is his contract for three or four years. And the faster you play, the better it is for that guy to improve, the better it is to take advantage of it, the better it is if he doesn't really play all season, then we, when, we, when this happens a year from now, we're like guessing win-loss. I don't even know how good the guy is yet, right? It is an unknown. So it's like I'd say minimum I'd like to get him five or six games this year. I, I need to get Trey Lance starts. 
ideally, I'm not doing the Mahomes thing. I want to see Trey Lance play, improve. You have some easy landing spots, Jacksonville, Cincinnati, Atlanta. Obviously, it depends on your record, and there, there are a lot of different variables here, but I do not think it would be a positive. While it might be in the immediate that the team would be good, but big picture, you fucking roll the dice and put all your chips in the middle table for this kid. So if he doesn't play a season and you go, even if your season goes 12-5 and five and you win a playoff game, you get knocked out in the second round, it's awesome, but, like, Jimmy's done. Like, the, Jim, J, this is Jimmy's last season, whether he makes it through week five or whether he plays the entire season to the playoffs. Jimmy will not be on the team next year. I, I don't give a shit what Jed said. Zero chance. And he shouldn't be. That, that would be m- moronic. Idiotic. So it's like, which I understand, and I wouldn't blame them. You're just trying to win games. But I'm just saying, big picture, it would then be pretty risky next season, right? Like you just, there would just be unknown. He hadn't played. So you, you're going to have some growing pains. Like I, he's a second-year player, but if he has no real reps beside maybe some blowout games, it is a... It's a fluid situation. It's impossible when I said like hypotheticals. You really don't know, right? You, you kind of know it when you see it. Kyle said that, right? You and I talked about that. He even like, guys will know it when we see it. I agree. And what but, he was saying was we'll know it. We'll know when it's time for him to compete with Jimmy. Not even when the, we know it's time for him to take the job. But the problem is, okay, let's say they know that by like week one. Like, okay, but Jimmy's then solid and just keeps on playing. They keep winning and competing and things are going well. You're not just, I don't think... If they're competitive, and when I say competitive, like on their standard where they're like competing to get back to the one seed or competing for the division all season long and they're eight and two or, you know, seven and four, just have winning records. Do you think they would just, if J- and Jimmy's doing fine, just bench Jimmy Garoppolo? Like I have a hard time seeing that on like a week, you know, like on like a Monday. Yeah. Like I mean, going again, into the week. I don't. I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility if they think Trey would be ready to give them something Jimmy doesn't give them. So if they're like nine and three and things are just going well and Jimmy's just looking like 2019, not like super special, but definitely not bad. You could envision them just benching Jimmy Garoppolo. Like I'm, not saying, I, I'm not saying I envision it. I'm just saying I think there's a way to do it. If Trey Lance, if you think he's ready to play, like that's what it's about. I'm not saying you envision it. I'm just saying, could you foresee a scenario? I think you could justify. That would be it. pretty shocking. Way. I think. Yeah. I think you could justify. Now, again, are you nine and three and like you look like you could win the Super Bowl? Because if that's the case, then you don't do it. But that, that's what but I'm if saying. You're, that's, but, but if that's you're the problem, yeah. But if you're nine and three and you're like, this is remember the Packers a few years ago, but they had Rodgers. That's a bad example. It was like that, that team can't win the Super Bowl. Nine and three makes it really nine and three. You probably can't do it. But what about seven and five, which is still pretty good. Seven and five is easier for sure. You know, but I, I, I but I, I think part of the evaluation higher. is like okay. You went to a Super Bowl a few years ago with a better team around your quarterback who didn't have to carry you. Do you look at it? And this is kind of why the Niners stuck with Kaepernick over Alex, right? It was like, well, we know what Alex can give us, but we think the high end of Colin is ultimately what can get us to the Super Bowl. Now, again, that team was really, really good in a lot of other areas too, but this team has the potential to be really good in a lot of areas. So it's to me, it's as simple as like, Okay, nine and three, but are we at our are we at our ceiling? Like, are we capped here? Are we going to need to be better in order to actually finish this off? That's where I would say, just thinking about just because it is a complicated scenario and just situation. I think you throw him into games throughout the season, even I, if I, Jimmy's yeah, I rolling. Them to. And, and there are going to be times where he gets a series, like just run with the offense, right? He gets treated just uniquely. <laughs> It's not like, well, this is stupid. No, you, you you treat him like you get to do whatever you want because the price you paid for him established that Jimmy doesn't get to say a peep. There's I mean, no just, good way to do it. It's hard. No, unless that's, you, that's what I'm saying. Unless your guy's whole, the ready. The situation is complicated. The only way it's good is if your guy's just ready to be better. If Trey Lance is ready to be better than Jimmy Garoppolo or as good and can do some things ceiling-wise that Jimmy can't do. And like, the, But I think like Miami in hindsight, I kind of thought the situation was was – Poorly. I, I didn't think it was great last year, but in hindsight, it's really hard to do it. And they still managed to win 10 games. So what? Like, really, when you look back, right, this is your point. Do you look back and go, Miami missed their shot to make the playoffs? And do what? And do what? Um, in hindsight, they had part of it, too, was they had to see Tua because... Making the, trade this big, guy. making the playoffs is a big deal for a franchise like it that. It is, but the other factor, right, was the the thing that made it so weird. They had the third, they had the Texans pick, which was clearly going to be in range to get a quarter. They had to see two. Yeah, you're last right. Year. You're right. You're right. You're right. Right. Like 
Kansas City wanted to see Mahomes. They didn't have to see him in the way that Miami had to see Tua last year. Yeah. But in the end, like, was whatever. Let's, is, use, is, let's use that. Is Tua in traumatized Kansas, from that experience last year? In the Kansas Probably City not. scenario where you're winning the division, you're an 11-12 win team, your quarterback's having a fantastic year. Like, look, Mahomes wasn't coming in in those games. He was just sitting on the right. sideline learning. Yep. In that scenario, let's say the Niners, like the Chiefs, are just on a way to win 11 or 12 games, and they're going to win the division. I still think, unlike Mahomes, where he just sat and learned, I think you got to throw Trey into some of these moments. I what do think, you think about that? Yeah, I agree with that. I think you got to have him in the game plan. Yeah. I, I, it, just like you know, Kaepernick had some of that stuff. That's the beauty is that he can do things the other guy can't do. I think Lamar did too. They're not redundant. Him and Jimmy are not redundant, but it's like, you don't want Trey Lance just out there running around. Like you want him to throw the football, right? You want him to do some of that stuff. I, I'm saying, he gets serious. <laughs> yeah. I, I think given a few things, his experience, I know he hasn't played a lot of football. I know he hasn't played FBS football, but he has like the thing that Kyle Shanahan quarterbacks need. He has some experience just in being in control of an offense in doing some of the stuff Kyle requires. He goes under center. He runs play actions. Like, he's done some of it. Like, going under center is a big deal for college quarterbacks. It's a huge... Yeah. Remember Goff? Goff had never done it when he got to the NFL. And what, what wasn't the first camp. Like, he was fumbling snaps, and it was bad. I think I think Kyle said when he coached the senior bowl and they got all the quarterbacks, he said, raise your hand if you've ever been under center, and no one raised their hand. So I think the combination of that, I think the combination of Garoppolo's injury history... Not that I'm predicting an injury, but the combination of the fact that Garoppolo didn't look good. I know it's just one week, but didn't look great against Arizona. I I would not be surprised to see Trey Lance as the starter earlier rather than later this year, given those three factors. Yeah. Now we will like I, I would imagine like Detroit, Jimmy's, you know, as close to a lock of being a starter as anyone who's not like a quote unquote franchise quarterback. But I will be stunned if Trey Lance ain't getting snaps week one. That might be two. It might be five. Could be three. Mm -hmm. I will be shut. As we sit here today, May 12th, I know nothing whether he can even complete some of their routes. I bet he plays some snaps yeah, in that game. I think it's a good prediction. And I think last year, maybe we can read something into the way it played out at the end of the year. Jimmy Garoppolo and Trey Lance are not Nick Mullins and C.J. Beathard. And the Niners were five and nine when CJ Beathard took over for Nick Mullins, right? But we just saw Kyle, when Kyle thinks he should be getting more out of his quarterbacks, he makes changes even if we think it's not, it's, it's uh, moving around deck chairs on the Titanic. One thing I will say though, even Mullins and CJ is like they were way more comfortable with everything going on in an NFL game, just the speed of it all, than Trey yeah. would be like his first start. Now, it doesn't mean they are not any good, but. It just you can be overwhelmed as a rookie, even if you're really talented. I bet if we went back and like looked at Michael Vick's first start, like he might just be running around. Like it's just yeah. it's a lot going on. Yeah, you know. Yeah. The, the, whoever you're playing, if you're playing Seattle or Arizona, J.J. Watt and Chandler Jones don't look like whoever South Dakota State's rolling out, right? That's true. I did see, and you and I are going to do a Trey Lance thing later, uh, future date. There are some plays at at North Dakota State that are sacks in the NFL that turned into sweet plays for Trey Lance. You know. But that, that, that's every rookie, you know, right? Think of who was, who's been the best sure. rookie like the last decade. I, I remember the when I was rookie? in the league watching like Cam, no, I just rookie quarterback, like Cam Newton, his rookie year was all over the map. I mean, Jameis, I mean, all these guys. Wentz. Herbert probably Wentz. the best rookie. Oh, yeah, by, by far. But they didn't win many games. No. It wasn't his fault always, but to me, what they can't remember Wentz's rookie year and when like you and me were bullish when it, there was like sneaky a decent amount of negativity it was clear his traits were like wow this guy's really good mm -hmm. but they weren't winning and losing I think they went seven and nine that year but I bet if you watched them the seven and nine felt probably more like a five win team because they were kind of down like on the whole situation but it was clear like this is going to translate if they can just figure it out that's where the Niners don't really have time to go like this is going to translate because they need him to function. But he might need some time. It's just, it's a very complicated situation. 
Because, like, the Jets, like, they're just going to throw Zach Wilson out there. He's going to make a ton of mistakes. It won't even matter, right? Right, right. But I bet in two years, if Zach Wilson's good, it'd be like, that rookie year when I just got to learn. I, I Peyton Manning reached out week, week seven when I had 20 picks. He said, listen, Zach, it's going to be okay. And he was like, I, I started stacking all these thoughts, and it, it helped me to this. Josh Allen. Trey would be like, yeah, I just sat on the sideline. Or, you know, I got my five snaps a game. It's, it is a different animal. But five snaps just... can turn into ten snaps pretty quick. True. So. That's Jimmy's worst nightmare. He gets a little taste, and he's just like, whoa. Yeah, well. He's, which is a good thing for Kyle because he gave two net first round. I wish my worst nightmare round. was hanging out making 20 mil. <laughs> yeah. 